Hey guys, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. This one has been a long time coming. Now this is part three of three of the living room set that I'm building for a friend of mine. Now, if you haven't seen the other two videos, I'm building this TV cabinet here to match a bookcase as well as an end table. Um, I'll link those other two videos down in the description box below. But for today, we're building the TV cabinet. Now this is just a nice, single, heavy, solid wood base cabinet. It's not overly difficult. I'm going to show you how I built this guy though, right now. Okay guys, so for our TV stand, it's going to be a few pieces and then we're going to just build it all, just like the bookcase before. So now again, just like the bookcase, we're going to have two side panels and a face frame. Now this one, we're going to have a back frame as well and then the top and then the, the guts that go inside of it. So this is what the side panels look like at the end. So it's a frame and panel finish and a flat back side. Now this is nothing more than two by twos, one by threes and some plywood. First step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna cut our two by twos down to size. Now I gang cut all of mine just to make sure that they're all the exact same length. From there, I had my plywood center section, it's three quarter inch birch ply. I had it ripped down to the width at my home center and then I just cut it to length here myself. And then from there, same thing as before, I took my inner dimensions, which is the exact same width as my plywood, and I just cut my one by threes to match that. After that, we're gonna take our plywood and we're gonna cut some, cut? We're gonna drill some pocket holes in our plywood. That way we can attach it to our two by two. From there, we're just gonna give everything a preliminary sanding. It's much, much easier to sand everything while it's completely torn apart. So go ahead, give everything a sanding right now. Make sure that when you sand on the plywood too, you only give it a quick buzzing with like 220. It doesn't need very much, but you do not wanna go through that veneer. After that, I'm gonna take some three quarter inch spacers and I'm going to space my plywood up. That way it's flush with the back side of my two by two. From there, I'm just gonna run some glue down each edge, and then just use my pocket holes and screw it in place. Um, if you want to, you can clamp everything in place, face clamp everything, that way nothing shifts, keeps everything on a level plane. Then we're gonna flip them back over and we're gonna attach the trim. Now again, this is just one by three trim, and you can glue and clamp, you can brad nail, you can pin nail, you can just pressure fit them in, like. You can attach these however you want. I'm just putting some glue on and some clamps because I have just barely enough clamps to make it work. But if you don't, like I said, there's tons of different ways you can attach this to. We're gonna flip them back over again once the glue is dry. And we're going to use some pocket hole plugs and I'm just gonna put a small dab of glue into every single hole and I'm just gonna pocket hole plug into the hole. And then after that, we're gonna come back, shave down those plugs Again, you can use whatever you want, a flush trim saw. I just have a hand plane, so I just shave down the top of them. Then from there, I'm just gonna come back, buzz over them with a sander just to knock them down completely flush with the plywood. We're gonna flip it back over again, and then on the front side, on each leg, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, this is an optional step, by the way. I'm measuring up and down four inches from each end making just a small mark, and then I've got a 45 degree chamfer bit in my router, and I'm just taking and putting a chamfer on each leg. All right, and this one here, this is the face frame. Now, it is just two by twos. Now, I'm using poplar, but again, you can use pine, poplar, whatever the heck you want, doesn't really matter. It is one by two. I say two by two, I meant one by two. <laughs> Same thing as before, we're gonna gang cut all of our one by twos, after that, we're just gonna clamp everything down, flush with the table, add some glue to each joint, and then pocket hole it together, making sure that your boards are flush on the ends with each other. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and drill our offset pocket holes. Now these are the ones that are going to attach the frame to our side panel. 
and make sure that you offset them to the center of the pocket holes before it. That way you don't run the risk of having screws running into screws or your drill bit or anything like that. And then I've also got this guy here. Now this one is the rear frame. It is nothing more than just a triangle. Triangle? It looks like a rectangle. Why did I say triangle? Anyway, it's nothing more than a rectangle. It's one by twos, just like before. I made the back one out of pine, but I said you can build the whole thing out of pine. It doesn't matter. Anyway, same thing as before. Just glue and screw uh, with pocket holes, and then add your offset pocket holes on each side. Now the reason I'm not putting any in the center is because the board is so short that if you were to actually attach a pocket hole right there, you'll actually see a divot um, from the side of the panel. You can actually tell where the pocket hole is. So I'm hiding my pocket holes up here into each corner. That way you'll never actually see them. And then once I attach them to the frame, I'm just gonna clamp them down anyway, so. All right, now that we've got the face frame and the back frame attached to the side panels, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark for my cleats. Now my cleats are going to be holding up my shelf on the bottom and in the center of the TV stand. So right now it's laying on its back. This is the back panel, this is the face frame right here, and that's the top. So I've got a scrap of the three quarter inch ply here that I'm gonna be attach or using for my bottom shelf. And I'm just gonna hold it flush with the top of the frame and I'm going to strike a line. I'm going to do that in a few places along the back, along the face frame and along the sides and then from there I'll attach with some glue and brad nails my cleats to the bottom side of that line and then I can lay my plywood shelf on top of that, glue it down and put a few brads into it. Now for the cleats you can use whatever you want. You can use a one by two just ripped in half, you can use some scrap plywood. Uh, in my case I'm going to be using some bead molding that I've got here. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to. The only reason I'm doing this is because just because just because a cleat is a cleat doesn't mean it has to look like a cleat. So you can make your cleats out of molding to give it a more finished look. Granted it's on the bottom and not a lot of people are going to see it but it's just a nice like finishing touch. So entirely optional up to you but I'm going to go ahead and do that.
All right, guys. Full disclosure. What I planned on doing for the back frame here is not going to work. So what I'm actually going to end up doing is I'm going to take these one by two and I'm going to finish just banding all this ply here. And uh, basically what it's end up going to happening is the back frame will be identical to the front frame. Uh, I'm just going to glue and brad nail them on from here. But if you go back and you're going to build this from the very start, um, back in the beginning of the video when I said that the rear frame was nothing more than just a simple triangle rectangle, uh, basically just go ahead and make the rear frame identical to the front. It'll just save you a lot of time. And from there, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take a router and I'm just going to chamfer out a uh, small rabbit. Chamfer out a rabbit. I'm going to put it a rabbit bit and I'm going to... Uh, rabbit out a spot for just to recess in a quarter inch plywood backer after that. So still have a nice look to it. This wasn't the original game plan, but got to roll with the punches. Sometimes things don't work out. Make it work. All right, so this is where we're at. So I got the doors made. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how I made these cabinet doors. I did make a separate video on how to make DIY friendly, super easy cabinet doors. I go over the measurements and everything like that and the assembly process. So if you want to see how I made the doors, I'll have a link somewhere up here and uh, just go check that video. But I do have the, both the cabinet doors made. Um, I've got the back panels cut and you already see me uh, route in my rabbit into the back of the cabinet. I just took my measurement and I cut out some quarter inch plywood backers uh, and I made my backers about a sixteenth of an inch shorter in every dimension just to make sure that they fit in nicely. Um, for the center one, I do have a couple of holes cut out for cord pass-throughs. Now all I did was I just found uh, the height of my bottom and the height of my shelf and I literally just gave myself a quarter of an inch up from each one of those and uh, I just drilled a hole with a two and a half inch hole saw. So the bottom of my hole is a quarter of an inch up from my shelf and the floor and this guy this is the middle shelf now I did attach some cleats inside of the cabinet as well to hold up the shelf now you can attach this however you want you can drill pocket holes you can attach it that way you don't even need a shelf you don't have to put a shelf in there if you want it it's entirely optional but it is nothing more than a piece of quarter inch or three quarter inch ply and a piece of one by two banded on the front of it um, I made the shelf about an eighth of an inch smaller just so I could fit it in there, turn it, and set it onto the cleats. So. And then the top is this guy right here. So this is a project panel that I bought. And this is a pine project panel. You can find these at almost any uh, big box store or something like that. All I did was I took my circular saw and I just ran it, uh, the edge off to make it the length that I needed. And from there, I took an eighth inch round over bit and I rounded over the entire top side and then I took a 45 degree chamfer to put a nice under bevel on the bottom side all the way around. So again, just a couple of simple touches but it just adds a nice little something or other to the top. Makes it look a lot less plain than just throwing a slab of wood onto the top of it. So all we got left now is to get onto the finishing steps. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some stain on this guy. Then after that, I'm going to put three coats of water-based clear coat. Now, I'm going to put on my first two coats, and then I'm going to stop, sand that down with 600 grit sandpaper in between my second and my third coat, and then I'm just going to put my third coat on, let that dry for minimum 24 hours, and then start reassembly.
Well, guys, that's it. Like I said, not crazy difficult. There's a lot of steps, don't get me wrong, but it's not crazy difficult. I really hope you guys may have picked something up or learned something on this project. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. I'd really like to hear it. Um, I hope to have a cut list for this guy available soon as well, um, so you can build this exact one. Um, but yeah, if you guys like this video, thumbs up and a subscribe would go a huge way, so that would be awesome. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in the next one.